three things that keep godly men weak. Number one, a love of the world. First John 2 and 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. There are a lot of men who love the world in the Bible. And equally, there are a lot of women who were infatuated by the world, allured by the world and all that it has to offer. However, I want to zero in on one specific man who loved the world and all it had to offer more than God. And that man was Samson. I won't go through the complete story of Samson because the majority of us know the story of Samson and Delilah. We know the story all too well. However, today, I want to focus on Samson and his love. Samson, one of the judges of Israel, is mentioned in the book of Judges, chapter 13 to 16. The story of Samson spans four chapters in the Bible. In total, there are 96 verses dedicated to Samson's life, actions, and interactions with various characters. And not once, not once, do we see a verse mention that Samson loved the Lord. But we see Samson falling for multiple women. Samson was a man that loved the world, and his love of the world pushed him into being a weak man. Three times we see Samson's love declared for a woman, but not once do we see his love declared for God in Scripture. Woman number one. The Philistine woman from Timnah. In Judges 14, Samson falls in love with a woman from Timnah, a Philistine city. Despite objections from his parents, Samson insists on marrying her. And the story recounts the events surrounding their wedding and subsequent challenges. Woman number two, the prostitute in Gaza. In Judges 16, 1 through 3, Samson visits Gaza and spends the night with a prostitute. This encounter is mentioned briefly in the narrative. Woman number three, Delilah. Delilah is the most well-known woman in Samson's story. She plays a central role in his downfall. Samson develops an affection for her, but she eventually betrays him by discovering and revealing the secret of his strength, leading to his capture and ultimate demise. Delilah turned a strong man weak. Samson's love of the world turned him into a weak man. This applies to both men and women. Ladies, are you listening? Whenever you are on the verge of deepening your relationship with God, Satan knows that all it takes to make you lukewarm again is to introduce a new man into your life, which results in you falling out of love with God and neglect to prioritize him. Instead, you may prioritize this man. Ladies, is this pattern that you see in your life? This also applies to men, gentlemen. Are you paying attention? Satan is well acquainted with men. He has been tempting and destroying men's lives long before you were born. He has centuries of experience. Satan knows that all he needs to do to extinguish the fire of God within you is bring another woman into your life, diverting your attention away from God and onto that woman. Sometimes it may not even be a new woman. It could be the same woman he has been using for years to draw you back into fornication, adultery, or other forms of sexual immorality. If Samson loved God the way he should, he would have denied Delilah and the other two women. He would have denied the world. Ultimately, his love for the world made him weak. When we succumb to the love of the world, the consequences are grave. First and foremost, we risk spiritual lukewarmness, a state of spiritual apathy and complacency. We become vulnerable to compromise, willingly engaging in actions that contradict God's word. Our values become diluted and we lose our ability to be salt and light in the darkened world. In turn, this weakens our witness and distances us from experiencing the fullness of God's presence in our lives. Dear brothers and sisters, let us heed this sobering call 
to examine our hearts and actions. The love of the world may attempt to weaken us, but we have the power of Christ within us. By nurturing a God-centered love, we can rise above the enticements of the world and become strong, faithful men who honor and glorify our Heavenly Father. Number two, prioritizing worldly success over God. In a world driven by materialism and personal achievement, it is easy for us to place more importance on personal achievements, wealth, or status than our spiritual journey. The desire for success can consume our thoughts and actions, gradually diminishing our focus on God. While having ambitious goals is not inherently wrong, we must be cautious not to let our earthly pursuits overshadow the eternal matters that truly shape our character and purpose. Do not compromise on the word of God for sake of earthly success. Do not compromise on being a man of principles for sake of earthly success. When we prioritize worldly success over our spiritual journey, we expose ourselves to various detrimental consequences. First and foremost, our relationship with God can suffer. As we become consumed by the pursuit of personal achievements and wealth, our intimacy with God may dwindle, leading to spiritual apathy and distance. We may find ourselves compromising our values and making decisions that contradict God's word, causing moral and spiritual erosion. Additionally, the pursuit of worldly success often leads to an insatiable desire for more fostering discontentment and robbing us of genuine joy and peace. While it is important to dream big and work diligently toward our goals, we must ensure that our pursuit of success aligns with God's principles. Here are some key points to consider. Firstly, anchor our worth in Christ. Our identity and value do not solely rely on our achievements or material possessions. Recognize that true success is found in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Secondly, prioritize our spiritual growth. Carve out intentional time for prayer, studying God's word, and participating in meaningful fellowship. Allow God's truth to shape our goals and guide our actions. Thirdly, cultivate a heart of gratitude. Develop an attitude of contentment and thankfulness, acknowledging that every good and perfect gift comes from God. Be generous with blessings we receive, using them to bless others and advance God's kingdom. Lastly, maintain proper perspective. Remember that our ultimate purpose is to glorify God in all that we do. Seek his wisdom and guidance as we pursue success. Ensure that our motives and actions align with his will. Let us heed this sobering call to evaluate our priorities and align our pursuit of success with God's word. Dream big, work hard, and strive for excellence. But in doing so, never forget the eternal perspective. May we be men who excel both in worldly endeavors and in our spiritual journey, glorifying God in all we do. Number three, neglecting self-discipline and self-control. Neglecting self-discipline and self-control can lead even the strongest of godly men to become weak. As men, called to live a life of holiness and godliness, we must recognize the importance of our self-discipline in our spiritual journey. In a world that encourages self-indulgence and instant gratification, it is easy to neglect the vital virtues of self-discipline and self-control. When we fail to exercise discipline over our thoughts, emotions, and actions, we become susceptible to various temptations and sinful patterns. Neglecting self-control weakens our spiritual resolve, hindering us from living the victorious life God intends for us. The consequences of neglecting self-discipline and self-control are severe and can lead to a spiritual weakness. 
First and foremost, it affects our relationship with God. When we lack self-control, we give in to sinful desires and compromise our commitment to living according to God's commands. This distance from God hinders our spiritual growth and leaves us vulnerable to further temptation. Moreover, the neglect of self-discipline can lead to detrimental habits and addictions that consume our time, energy, and resources. It weakens our ability to make wise decisions, damages our relationships, and tarnishes our witnesses to the world. To counteract the peril of neglecting self-discipline and self-control, we must intentionally cultivate these virtues in our lives. Here are some practical steps. Firstly, anchor ourselves in God's word. Regularly study and meditate on scripture, allowing God's truth to renew our minds and transform our desires. Secondly, seek the power of the Holy Spirit. Recognize that self-discipline and self-control are fruits of the Spirit. Surrender to the Holy Spirit's leading allowing him to empower us to overcome temptation and develop self-control. Thirdly, establish healthy habits. Set specific goals and create disciplined routines that foster godliness. This may include regular prayer and meditation, maintaining physical and emotional health, and controlling our thought life. Furthermore, Practice accountability. Surround ourselves with trustworthy brothers in Christ who can support and challenge us in our journey of self-discipline. Engage in open and honest accountability, allowing others to speak truth into our lives. Lastly, cultivate a mindset of self-denial. Embrace the example of Jesus who demonstrated perfect self-control and obedience to the Father's will. Learn to say no to immediate gratification and choose the greater reward of living in alignment with God's purpose.